Today, I'm combining some of my favorite indicators to mathematically predict where the Bitcoin cycle peak might land. It's a fun experiment to see just how far this cycle could potentially go. So let's dive right in. Before we jump into price targets, let's first look at when the cycle peak might occur based on historical data. First up, I've got an indicator I call the halving extrapolator. This measures how far along we are between Bitcoin halving events by calculating the exact fraction of time passed within each cycle. Instead of focusing on price, it zeroes in on these key timestamps and converts the current time into a percentage that shows our position within the cycle. If we extend this indicator out based on the halving cycles, we're due to see a peak around October of this year, which really isn't that far away. The second indicator I've got, which is called the monthly extrapolator, works on a similar principle, but focuses on longer term calendar seasonality rather than halving cycles. It calculates where we stand now, and if extended, suggests a cycle peak in November 2025, so in a fairly similar ballpark. Many people are calling for an extended cycle since we haven't seen the typical parabolic price action that usually emerges in the later stages. Sure, this cycle has been different, but so has every cycle before it. Each one has been driven by unique catalysts and set against a completely different macro backdrop. We'll only truly know how this cycle compares once it's behind us. For now, all we can do is build our models based on historical patterns and try to understand how they might play out going forward. Let's look at some of my pricing models. First is my logarithmic growth bands metric which overlays logarithmic support and resistance bands on the price chart. This is based on a mathematical model tied to Bitcoin's timeline. Essentially, it calculates three curves, a central growth trend, an upper resistance band, and a lower support band, using logarithmic regression with delay factors to capture how price growth slows over time. These bands adapt dynamically with price and are plotted using exact log-based formulas to estimate ceiling and floor levels relative to the current market price. To account for diminishing returns, this logarithmic regression model is probably a lot more conservative than the rainbow colored charts you often see online. If we overlay price labels, we see we're just above the logarithmic fair value trend line at $86,000, with the upper resistance at $207,000. These lines increase every single day as Bitcoin matures and adoption evolves. But we can't just assume this is our cycle peak, because that would mean price goes completely vertical from here. So let's do some rudimentary interpolation to estimate the peak. If we assume the parabolic rally starts right now, we need to know how long it takes to hit the upper resistance band. Historically, in the last three cycles from the start of the parabolic rally to the cycle top, it took between four to six months for price to tap the upper resistance zone. Taking an average of five months and looking back, the upper resistance band's price has gone from $150 to $207,000 today. So, if the parabolic rally starts now and we factor in a further diminishing slope, the upper resistance line could be around the $260,000 mark in five months' time. That's a massive increase. And it would take some serious retail and institutional FOMO to drive price action like that. Next, we have my cycle top lines metric, which combines six critical on-chain metrics that have accurately called past cycle peaks. I won't dive deep into it here since I covered it extensively in a previous video, but I'll put a link to that down in the description below. Basically, it plots my factored version of the terminal price, my custom coin value elevation metric, the cumulative value coin days destroyed top indicator, the five times balance price, four times realized price, and the delta top. When these lines converge tightly and price passes through several of them, it marks the cycle peak pretty accurately. Now, I always prefer to use the merged average of all these indicators rather than any single one and price has clipped or exceeded this level at every past cycle peak. Currently, the merged line sits around the $193,000 mark. But like the previous indicator, this tends to trend upward over time, especially during the parabolic phase, so we'll need to factor that in. Looking at some rough calculations, the first three cycle peaks saw price increase roughly 350% 
during the parabolic phase where the merged white line started to flick upwards. However, the most recent peak in 2021 only hit about 150%, which is a 50% reduction from previous cycles. This is expected given Bitcoin's maturing market, so if we assume a similar reduction again, this cycle top line would reach around $240,000 at the parabolic peak. Putting all this together, if we assume a cycle that roughly follows past patterns but with diminishing returns, and one that kicks into parabolic mode right this second, typically lasting four to six months. The model suggests a price peak between $240,000 to $260,000 between October to December this year. Now, this is just a fun experiment throwing out different price targets using very rudimentary calculations. There are many wild assumptions baked into this, but it's exciting to see Bitcoin's potential. While these numbers might seem crazy now, over a 10-year horizon, they start to feel like a near certainty. That said, betting on an exact price or specific month is a fool's errand. I'm not making decisions based solely on whether my calendar says it's October or December. If the cycle takes longer, I'm happy to wait. And for most Bitcoiners, price predictions matter less because many are choosing never to sell. Because when you sell, you're betting the US dollar or your local currency will outperform Bitcoin which looking at the logarithmic growth model has been wrong far more often than not. But even if you're a long-term holder who never plans to sell, these on-chain and technical models are still very valuable to you. They highlight times when adding to your Bitcoin stack is statistically less favorable than others. And if you're a trader trying to time the top, I always stress the importance of finding confluence among models rather than relying on just one single indicator. Find the ones that make sense for you and don't fall into the trap of thinking you can time the absolute top and sell your whole bag at once. A reverse dollar cost averaging exit strategy, where you scale out more as models signal the top, is a safer, smarter approach. Remember, today was a fun experiment. Most of the time, predictions are garbage. And this one firmly falls into that category too. But the models behind those predictions are the ace up your sleeve. It's not about predicting the future, it's about reacting to the data and keeping your emotions in check when the time to act finally comes. So, to wrap things up, the key to understanding Bitcoin's cycle peaks lies in combining both time-based and on-chain indicators. Tools like the extrapolators, logarithmic growth bands, and cycle top lines give us a more complete picture of when the cycle might reach its peak. It's this blend of different data points that helps us move beyond guesswork and make smarter decisions about the market's trajectory. But while these models suggest that a speculative target of between $240,000 to $260,000 could be reached within the next four to six months, if we enter a parabolic phase from here, it's important to remember these are just wild estimates. Even though they're based on historical patterns and the concept of diminishing returns, the market doesn't follow a strict script timing and price structure will always shift. So as exciting as these price levels are to consider, we need to stay flexible and be prepared for whatever the market throws at us. Finally, no matter how many indicators we use or how solid our models seem, successful trading and investing ultimately come down to managing emotions and finding confluence between signals. Relying on just one indicator or trying to perfectly time the absolute top is a risky game. Instead, reacting calmly and strategically to the data as it unfolds, while keeping emotions in check, is what positions you best for long-term success. If you're serious about Bitcoin analysis, my full custom indicator suite is now live, built for investors looking to gain an edge through deep cycle signals and advanced on-chain insights. It's available now through the link in the description, where you'll also find my free newsletter. And if you found this valuable, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. And I'll see you all in the next one.